So, hello and welcome to another lesson in our study of complex analysis. So, today we are going to talk about classification of singularities. So, how do we classify singularities? Okay, so I'm um, a final year student of mathematics at KNUSD and I'll be taking you through the lesson. So please don't forget to like the video, it helps you and you can subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you'll be notified of new videos as and when they are uploaded. So thank you and let's begin with the lesson. So what at all is a singularity? So a singularity is a point at which an equation, a surface, etc. blows up or becomes degenerate. And Singularities are also called singular points. So I know the first definition is a bit technical. So let's take a very simple one. So singularity also called singular points of a function of the complex variable z is a point at which it is not analytic. Okay, and we've already treated what analytic functions are, so you should know that. Right, so we in a way we are trying to get for like the the, the the zeros what will make the function not exist okay all right so when it comes to classifying our singularities as far as our study of complex analysis is concerned then we have three ways in which we can classify our singularities so we have one the pool and the pool is sometimes called isolated singularities that's the first one then the second one is a removable singularity and the third one is what we call essential singularity okay so we are going to go through them one by one and solve questions on each of them so that the understanding will become better and clearer. So let's start with the first one, a pool. So if our complex valued function f of z has the form, so here what we've just done is that we've tried to find the Lorentz expansion, the Lorentz expansion for our function f of z. So when you find the Lorentz expansion for our f of z, so the Lorentz expansion for f of z we are going to get these parts and you can see that for the expansion we have two different parts okay so we have the analytic part and we have the principal part so the analytic part has positive powers so you can see here we have positive one but we don't bring it. we have two then we have three four up to n then we have a second part which is called the principal part and that one has powers of negatives. So for instance, when you bring this one up here, you can see this is to the power negative one. When you bring this one up here, it will be to the power negative two. So this one also goes uh, to the power negative n. I hope you understand. So you can see even the analytic part is very, very similar. Or let me see the Taylor series expansion. So the Lorentz expansion always has two parts the analytic part which has positive powers and the principal part which has negative powers okay so if f of z has this form in which the principal part so that means you are concerned about this part has only a finite number of terms given by what we have here so you can see here we have a finite number of terms because we have n terms which is finite but here it was infinite because it didn't end and where our e, so what we have here is non-zero. You should know when this is zero, then everything here becomes zero. So we don't have a finite number of terms again. We will have infinite. Okay, so what we have here should be non-zero. Then z equals z naught is called a pool of order n. Okay. So that's the definition for what a pool is. 
So we will try and solve some two examples on what we've done and the understanding will become very clear. So now if f of z has a pull at z equals z naught, then the limit as z approaches z naught of our particular function f of z is equal to infinity. And <coughs> one thing you should also notice that a pool of order n equals 1 is called a single pool. When the order is 2, that's n equals 2, it's called a double pool. Okay. So note that pools are also the same as isolated singularities. I think I've already made mention of this. And there's just some few things here that you, you can note to help you really understand what we've done. So note that if Z0 is a zero of order n for f of z, then Z0 is a pool of order n for 1 over f of z. Okay, then if f of z and g of z have pools of order m and n respectively at z equals z naught, then a function h of z which is equal to f of z times g of z has a pool of order m plus n at the point z equals z naught. Okay, so we first assign it what a singularity was and we could see that when classifying we can have isolated singularities or their pool removable and essential and we are talking about the first one which is the pool okay and we've given the definition for it so now let's try to solve examples and you really get the understanding very well okay so example determine the pools and their order for each of the following functions so we have two functions here so we have f of z equals 1 over z minus 1 and you have g of z equals z plus 4 or raised to the power 3 so you could see that this is the same as z minus 1 raised to the power minus 1 this is the same as z plus 4 raised to the power negative 3 so you can see these are all the principal parts they are the form of uh, the principal parts of the Lorentz expansion right as we give in the um, our definition so let's take the first one so you see when you take the first question at the point z equals 1 you have 1 over 1 minus 1 which is 1 over 0 and at this place the function f of z is not analytic right so that means that z equals 1 is a pool or an isolated singularity of f of z and the order is whatever we have here and so here it is order 1 so that means it has order 1 so it's a single pool so the solution z equals 1 is a pool since as z equals 1, f of z is equals 1 over 0, it's not analytic. So the order of the pool is 1, right? And the order of the pool is 1 because, like I said, it was 1 over z minus 1. So we, we, we know that um, whatever we had here was 1, n was 1 here. So it has order of 1, right? And an order of 1 is also known as a simple pool. We've already stated that. Then now let's take our g of z so this was our g of z so with our g of z too the only point at which it will not be analytic is when z is equal to minus 4 because when z is equal to minus 4 then we are going to have g of z will be equal to 1 over 0 cube and this makes it not analytic right so that means that z is equal to negative 4 is a pool and because we have n here to be 3 it has order 3 okay so that's it with the pool so maybe you can have another example like maybe h of z is equal to 1 plus 1 over z minus 1 then plus let's say 2 over z minus 1 squared so you could see here too the it's going to have a pool at z equals 1 and it's going to be 
of other two that's double pull okay so that's it with the pull so with the pull always you expand the particular function using the Lorentz expansion then it has to be finite okay so at the point at the last point then you have your singularity there and you also have your other day so yeah that's it for the first one so the second one is what we call removable removable singularities so in a way when you look at it when you look at the function you can say that there is a singularity but I realize that when you do one or two stars you realize that that particular singularity can be removed so that's the reason why it has that name okay and it's very simple to comprehend especially if you are very good at finding your limits using the laopita La rule so if a single valued function f of z is not defined at z equals z naught but the limit as z approaches z naught of f of z exists then z equals z naught is called a removable singularity okay so let's take an example and you realize it's quite simple so an example so our f of z is sine z over z so you could see that with this eh, if z is equal to zero when our z is equal to zero then we are going to have sine zero over zero and we know we all know what sine zero is and we know at this point in time our function is going to be undefined have you realized that yes it's going to be undefined it will fail to exist but when we find the limit as z approaches zero of our function we are going to get one and this shows that this particular function has a removable singularity okay so a quick explanation as to the reason why when you find the limit of this function you are going to get one so you know we have limit as z approaches zero of sine z over z so when you put in the limit you're going to get zero over zero and this according to the L'Hopital rule when we have something like this then what you do is that we differentiate both the numerator and the denominator so when we differentiate the numerator we'll get cos z the denominator will get one so now when you put in the limit what the limit approaches so zero we are going to get cos zero over one and cos zero is one so one over one which gives us one so that's the reason we have one here so that means that hang z equals zero is a removable singularity okay so from the definition here it's quite simple so that's the removable singularity so you you'll be finding limits here so if you have a control of your limits then this should be very simple for you so now let's move on to the third singularity and that is called the essential singularity so with that one so we are going to take the Laurent expansion so when you take from the Laurent expansion of f of z as we can see here if all our e negative ends so what we have here if all those that we have here are non zero then z naught is called an essential singularity of f of z okay to the non zero and infinite so this means that if z is equal to z naught is an essential singularity of f of z then the principal part of the Lorentz expansion has infinitely many parts okay it has infinitely many parts so in simple sense this is what it means you have this particular expansion that's the Lorentz expansion right so you know this is the analytic part and it's the principal part if you take the principal part and it is infinite like it goes uh, you know if it is finite then it will be a pool because you know the other 
by which is infinite, then that particular singularity is called the essential singularity. Okay. So let's take an example. So we have this particular function here, e then power one over z. Okay. So um, when you find the expansion for this, okay. So when you expand using the Lorentz expansion, you are going to get one plus one over z plus one over two factorial z squared plus one over three factorial z raised to the power four, then plus it will go like it will be infinite. So you can see that here we have negative powers. This is when you bring this one up. This is power negative one, power negative two, power negative three, and it continues. We don't know when it ends. It is infinite. And that's the principal part two. So as a result of that, z equals zero is an essential singularity because you know that it is only at z equals zero that this thing will be will not be analytic. Okay. So maybe you might wonder the reason why when you find the Lorentz expansion of this, you're going to have what we have here. So a simple explanation. So I hope you remember the Taylor series for EX. So the Taylor series for EX is giving us what we have here. Okay. So if you're finding for that of 1 over x, then wherever you find your x, you replace it with 1 over x, and you are going to get what we have here. Okay, so here we use z instead of the x. So that's how to classify singularities whether it is a pool, then if it's a pool, you should know the order, right? And whether it is removable, you be finding limits, and whether it's essential. So the essential, when you find the Lorentz expansion. Um, that's the principal part will be infinite. Okay, so um, thank you very much for um watching this video, and I wish you all the best.